It was two years of work, um, two years of taste testing, and I had staff that work in the I Quit Sugar office who helped me test the recipes. Um, but it was a very long, laborious process. Um, and I mean, a big part of it, as you know, is also using up food scraps. So I committed to not wasting a single item of food in the whole process. So the sort of the weaving in and out of ingredients, um, what I call the perpetual kitchen, was a big part of it. So that added an extra layer of complexity in some ways, but it actually made it more simplicious in other ways because you've just worked with what you've got. Oh, um, there's quite a few actually. There's a bit of um, online integration. So we've got a Simplicious kit, which has got extra information, and extra meal plans. So, um, and you can go online and get that information. I just couldn't fit it all in the book because it's kind of heavy and fat enough as it is. Um, there's a lot of fermenting um, recipes, but what I've done is made them really, really simple. So I've researched um, I guess the reason why um, fermenting works and what ingredients work best together, you know, sort of, for instance, daikon works better when it's integrated with carrot. So I make a sort of a deconstructed kimchi um, and using turmeric and black pepper in there. So it's a bunch of things like that which actually make it really simple by I put it all in a blender, you know, with a greater option. Um, rather than having to hand cut your cabbage and all of that kind of thing. So I sort of spent a lot of the two years researching ways just to make it easier for particularly families to access some of these, you know, fashionable recipes. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to think so. Um, yeah, the, the sugar-free message is is now getting quite mainstream. It's taken well. I've been you know banging on about this for five six years now. Um, Jamie Oliver, Oliver, of course, when he arrives at the dinner table with a sugar-free message, it certainly helps. Um, people do start to listen a little bit more. Um, yeah, I think people are no longer sceptical about the message. I think um, they're genuinely confused about what they're meant to eat. And I guess that's why this book, um, I hope, answers that because I think you can get rid of a lot of the rules and prescriptions and um, diet ideas and all of that kind of thing. And what I like to say is that, you know what, if you want to be well, you've got to learn to cook. And the biggest thing that stops people from cooking is um, time and, and money. They think that it takes longer and that it costs more. And every single recipe in this book is geared at costing less and taking less time, using up less pans, less food wastage, um, less electricity, less storage, the whole thing. So, um, and that's the same with sugar. If you quit sugar, you quit in processed food. And if you're not eating processed food, you've got to learn to cook. Um, so it all kind of comes together and it's simple. <laughs> well, uh, do my eight-week program or read one of my previous books is a good start. Um, look, there's a couple of things that you can do. Um, I do think that you've got to commit. You've got to be ready. You don't treat it like a diet. Um, you've got to feel that it's a, an experiment that you really want to try out on yourself. And that's very much my mantra. It's not a draconian diet. So I always say, you know, be ready for it. Be ready to kind of experience feeling different. So I focus on feeling different, having energy um, rather than weight loss. The weight loss happens naturally if it's meant to, but really predominantly it's just about having a sense of um, your appetite, a real appetite again. That's what gets people, you know, is they go, I actually eat when I'm hungry now. Now, for most people, that means you'll lose weight because you're eating as your body needs to eat. Um, but some of the things that you can do if you just want to sort of dabble in it, um, cut out any liquid sugar, so fruit juice, soft drinks, anything like that, just milk, water, tea, coffee. Um, stick to that, to that kind of you know, basic formula. Um, low fat products, cut all low fat products out. When they take fat out, they put sugar in. So a really good way to um, avoid sugar is to avoid low fat diet products. And I guess the third thing, um, would be to eat, avoid any foods where you can't actually see the ingredients. So anything with a gooby sauce, you know, in the Bay Marie at the, the food court, don't touch it. But eat the meat and the sovlaki and the, the you know, roast veggies 
you know, at the pub or the Greek, you know, takeaway, because it's pretty much what you can see. You know, it's not going to have added sugar. So that would be three um, simple things that you can do. Um, okay, so if you've got a savoury tooth, which is the aim here, is to get people into a savoury way of thinking, I think something that we absolutely loved on set when I was making it for, for everybody, um, and it's kind of a novelty thing, and it's kind of got the blokey kids appeal thing as well, is the cheeseburger dim sims. They are pretty good. Uh, it kind of combines a little bit of everything, you know? Um, and then in terms of a sweet thing, um, in terms of sort of a, oh, I tell you, my wagon wheels so I use um, a gelatin which is really good for guts so it's a really good gut healing product and you know gelatin is used to make capsules and jelly snakes and all of that kind of thing but I promote the use of a really good quality one and you can make these amazing amazing um, wagon wheels with a sort of a marshmallow um, base or you know, filler but it's actually really good for your stomach um, and a raspberry jam that's made out of just raspberries and chia seeds and then a base and then chocolate and rah rah, rah. no sugar.